Everybody and welcome to the shoot around. I am the only host of this podcast, Rudy St. Clair. And joining me, as is tradition, above me is the one and only Jacob R.R. Buckets. Also above me is our latest and greatest host, Nick, aka Motown Noah. And then to screen left, my right, uh, we have the legendary Alex Hoops. As once, always, once you don't when you say the latest and the greatest doesn't when you say someone's a late great that's it means they died <laughs> no i just think it means it's the most recent late can also mean you know, uh, okay i suppose you know, as of that's late what i, I really didn't know what latest means brother that's an expression what? the late person the late you know they died hey check that's out this the latest video from rusty buckets that's it's the deadest video <laughs> no you you describe someone as the late great whoever whatever Rudy, what are you on the docket for today's show <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit almost broke alright <clears throat> splash now that you know how my eyes be I just wanted to uh, first, make... mi- first two minutes you could yeah, just don't call it a callback in the first two minutes <laughs> as I always do uh and following that, as usual, I'm going to apologize uh, for mistakes I've made, uh, primarily ones from other episodes. Nothing to apologize in this one yet, actually. And I don't mind, you know, doing the the SGA TikTok drop right there. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I had a lapse in judgment while we were doing our hypothetical playoff bracket for if the NBA season ended that day, uh, where I treat it like it's the NFL playoff bracket where the number one seed just gets the worst seed that advances point blank period and the shit restacks, you know, for a moment, I was just like, wait, isn't it like this? And you guys corrected me, but there were some comments lighting me up for that. So let me remind you guys, I am the casual here. I'm the host. These guys are the people I bring on to my podcast on Jacob's channel. (laughs) Here's the thing. It's not even about the fact that you didn't know that's how the seating works. It's that the graphic showed you where, like there were arrows that pointed <laughs> where would you go next. No, 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 no. Cause this was for the oh, there was round I'm one advancing to round two. Whatever. Yeah, there's arrows all over the, the play in grid because that's complicated. But the other thing that was just my pure stupidity. I know. Cause I made that portion of the graphic. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and then I also like to apologize for failing to state the reason that Kyrie Irving is ineligible for clutch player of the year, because I didn't realize the reason and that's he has missed more than 17 games. So he can't win jack shit. That rule might be the worst rule in the NBA. Maybe no. I'm stupid. Ooh, no. tomato, tomato, <laughs> tomato. Very much I think we should issue an apology. A lot of people were mad um, a couple episodes ago when we were doing the bag talk. I guess we miscontextualized the clip that LeBron was talking about. Oh, yeah. I think the number one oh, comment the- on that video was roasting us for taking that out of context. But I thought my jovial nature afterwards kind of made it obvious that I was being tongue in cheek about oh, LeBron not fair. having a bag. <laughs> yeah, and I watched yeah. the whole podcast. I knew it wasn't. The context and when he said it wasn't necessarily exactly what the title was, but you know that's what it was just the the best way to frame the conversation in a way that was clickable. That's the reality of it. I don't think it's entirely taking it out of context; just a different portion of the conversation. I stopped. I stopped reading the comments on the podcast, and so I'm glad that you guys are here to be like that meme where like the soldiers like protecting the kid and the like, <laughs> knives flying into him or are the comments and then there's little old me just standing in front of you guys so mm. i love it all right um, keep coming uh, so before we move on i want to mention that me and rudy played ones today uh mm-hmm. and we played we played five games to five i won four out of five and the total score was 26 to 10 after we were done uh, it was 26 because one game i hit a three when i only needed one um anyways I'm I, I'm thirsty. I don't want to go to the vent. I don't want to go get up and walk all the way to the water fountain that's far away. So I asked Rudy if I can have a sip from his drink. He goes, sure, hands it over to me. 
and it's like room temperature Celsius <laughs> inside that drink. I was expecting refreshing water, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What to be clear, that? this was not Celsius, what but was it was it? it was like a flavor packet in the water with like caffeine uh, in it. It was like a tangerine caffeine warm water <laughs> it was so warm I, I was not expecting a tangerine sensation uh yeah, but yeah. i didn't think to warn so, you you were beating me so bad once so we my can, brain was i could talk i could talk about this because it's like on twitter but me and d mills are probably going to be playing a 1v1 so i just wanted to play to warm up because i haven't played in a while and then rudy this morning was like uh, d mills is gonna win like he's got your number it's over <laughs> so i took that personally and like single i just decided to cook him how are you how are you one how are you playing one-on-one -on -one against d mills before kenny how did that happen we might we might play both uh, d mills is just the only one who responded to me on twitter <laughs> <laughs> i think it's interesting just because we we've met them very briefly but me and d mills have like the exact same build so it's just interesting to imagine us playing each other for that reason yeah to be clear it's not impressive that you beat me at all no it's not you're <laughs> tiny you're short and you can't you, it's crazy how bad you are at dribbling <laughs> <laughs> no i i i uh I thought my I handle you a couple bad. times you didn't toss me <laughs> sure your handle's not not fantastic you just turn your back to the basket like clockwork you know because you can just back me down into a corner and i can't do nothing that is correct Get god down. that's the lamest way to play ones is just backing somebody down i Get don't fucking care. shot no don't, you gotta so do three you gotta lame. do three whoa whoa whoa. whoa 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 first of all i hit plenty of threes and mid-range shots in this game i only did that for like five of my points <laughs> Yeah, I'm when it counts the most, guy. Yeah. I play in the post. That's what I do. Yeah. So our one-on-one -on -one game aside, uh, Nick, I think you had a little bit of a uh, news you wanted to bring up at the top of the show. I, Not I saw related to you, but a topic from Twitter. You know. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I was reading an article from Bleach Report, and I forget who the actual source was because it wasn't from Bleach Report. I think they were sourcing someone from ESPN, and the story was that Houston this summer could look to package Jalen Green and Shen Goon for like a bigger fish. And I, my question is like, okay, they want to trade Jalen green. Well, that makes sense because this report just came out like a week ago from Shams that they were shopping him uh, a couple months ago and they offered, uh, we talked about it. I think on last week's episode that the nets turned down an offer that was like Jalen green and multiple first round picks. So we, we discussed that a little bit. Oh, so, okay. Houston wants to kind of cash in on this late stage heater that Jalen green has been on. Maybe it's time for him to have a change of scenery. That makes sense. But if I'm Houston, why is it Shengun and not Jabari Smith? And I'm genuinely asking the panel here because I don't know. What am I missing here? Because if 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 I'm Houston, you know, for the next five years, I'm getting what, 20, 10 and five out of Shengun. Like, why don't I want that instead of Jabari Smith? I I have a take. That I have I've a, thought a about this. Reason. And I'm. This is no. This is no disrespect to Shengun because I think he's a fantastic player, all star. Uh, he's going to be an all star caliber player for years and years and years. He's great. No disrespect. I think it's kind of difficult to build around a player like that. And Jabari hmm. Smith Jr., not necessarily a player you're going to build around. Like he's not, he's maybe not going to be your franchise star, but I think. Houston's probably going to reach a point eventually where like it's similar to Jokic. Like you have to put not saying Shengun is Jokic or as good as Jokic, but they're similar types of players. He gets called baby Jokic all the time. Jokic for as great as he is, he is kind of a difficult player to build around in the sense that you have to have the personnel to accommodate a player like that and really maximize his strengths. And I feel like the Rockets would eventually run into a similar situation with Shengun where it's like, okay, we may have good players on paper, but we don't have the right players to maximize what Shengun does. So maybe from like that perspective, these reports are based on the idea of the Rockets saying, hey, you know, he is really good. Let's, instead of kicking the can down the road, see what we can get for him, Jalen Green, et cetera, picks now instead of having to eventually maybe lose him for nothing or be put in a difficult position trying to build around him in the future. 
Uh, I also think you mentioned at some point in a group chat something about him that was like that archetype of player has to be a degree of excellent to make sense to build around and to be that guy that Shen Goon isn't quite and probably won't quite be where Jokic is like the A++ version of that type of player and maybe the B++ version of that player doesn't really get the job done the same. It's not really the same just because it's the same type of player and we've seen it succeed doesn't necessarily mean Shen Goon is maximizing the things that he's good at to a superstar level. I was going to keep that take in the group chat, but since you just aired me out. I thought um, it was pretty lukewarm. <laughs> I mean, there. yeah, but, uh, you know, Rockets fans and Shen Goon fans are understandably very passionate about their players. I get it. So I, I get it. I understand. But also, like, uh -huh. I think at a certain point, you have to be, like, Jokic level to be – super like optimally effective as a player like that mm -hmm. um just because it's like it's such a unique like, archetype like denver, of player. denver felt okay making the leap of faith to build around Jokic to the degree that they did where it's like are you making that leap of faith with shengun i don't know if i feel the same about that and I like Shengun. Don't get me wrong. This is not intended as like, oh, he sucks. I, or I love a center. Enough. I love a center that can pass. I always well, it's exactly it. because of all that stuff that I I was a little bit confused. Shengun probably involved in one of the funnier conspiracies of the last couple of years, being that when he got drafted, he refused to use the team's interpreter and he needed to use his own interpreter. Uh, people were yes, it is just asking questions, Rudy. Thank you for the graphic here. <laughs> I am just asking questions. The conspiracy was that. Uh, as as a Turkish citizen, Shengun was actually one of Erdogan's cronies, and he was sent here to like gather American intelligence, and that's why he was with the interpreter. Another conspiracy I recently read about, I think this was in like Business Insider. You just scroll the most schizophrenic corners of the internet, I swear to God. <laughs> Another one I read, I think this was from Business Insider, is that Zion was actually made in a Chinese lab, and he was sent to disrupt Western food supplies, and all the uh, basketball stuff was just on accident. <laughs> he just needed the, well, the caloric funny. intake. You know, something to something to support the Jesus Christ the mission. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I think Victor Wembanyama was made in a lab in France to, you know, make the prominence of their country and in, in their PR in America do a little bit better. You know, that's that's we, we, maybe it was to oh, maybe they the made Victor Wembanyama because they riot too much over there, and so they were like, we need somebody to kind of unify the country, and they're like, how about a dude who's seven feet tall and can do literally everything? How about that? And France was like, "That's we're cool with that. That's fine. Are you suggesting the success of Wemby will reduce the amount of riots that happen in France? Yeah, because because what are they? They're always rioting about something. Usually, it's about like workers' rights and shit. Uh -huh. So I feel Fair. like, which is valid, and I, you know, I think there's maybe a conversation to be had. Is there something right, to be? Yeah. You know what? I, I don't want to take this thing too off the rails here, but is there something to be said about like the way that? COVID fucked up Gen Z and made everybody so isolated and made everybody so introverted. Motherfuckers are never going to organize. They're never going to revolt. Yeah. They're never going to. People are too scared to go. I'm being fucking a little bit serious here. People are too scared to revolt anymore. Everybody wants to be part of the revolution until it's time to start the revolution. There was, <laughs> nope, there you go. <laughs> Alex lagged out. Well, he'll be back in a sec. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's definitely a very real thing that's worthy of analysis for sure, especially considering like the movements that came towards the beginning of it all with like, uh, you know, the first summer after everyone was inside all spring. Um, let's see, I'm waiting on Alex to come back before I move on just like that. Personally, I kind of think the opposite about the Sangoon Jalen Green thing. Uh, I think that that is a duo that's like a potentially build a roundable just because they're so productive and so young already. Uh, I'm not saying that Sangoon is going to be Jokic, but I think you could get him to that Jokic point where if you put a perfect team around him, they are a legitimate contender. Uh, but it would take a really, really drastic amount of effort from Houston's front office to build around that team that way to create a championship contender around shangun and i think one of those pieces would be a guy like jabari smith you just need like one or two more of those guys i think the key reason that it would be them to instead of jabari smith though is a little bit of front office politics where it's like 
Shangun wasn't a, a top pick in a recent draft. Jabari Smith is looking much improved from year one to year two. Maybe he makes a bigger leap and like they see his ceiling as a support. Much, but improved. It's it's significantly improved for sure. And it's it's one that settles any doubts from last season, you know. And so because that high pick was so recent, because they might have a little bit more uh, wishy-washy feelings about Jalen Green by comparison, another top pick, packaging Jalen Green and Shangun for a better player than both of them would make sense to me as uh, many to frame it precisely. I think both of them are too young to really just be this quick to trade them away. I'd probably give, see a little bit, another year or two, what they can do together, at least another year. I feel like it's so early to pull the plug on them, especially that Jalen is just figuring it out now where it's like, imagine Jalen has figured it out. Well, I'm, I'm not. We're not going down this route. Let's just say it happened, uh, and that happened. And Shengun is who he is. That's something that's interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily a future championship core, but it's something that I think you should play out to some degree before you just try to cash in on it immediately. Well, is the argument also that even if if you are somebody who believes Shengun greater than sign Jabari Smith, it wouldn't the argument then be well that's why he's getting traded is because he's worth more on yeah, the market. That's probably true. Yeah. And I'm just kind of, you know, the NBA is a weird league. You know, it's it's one thing to sit here today and try to hypothesize, like, who could they even go get? But that's kind of the thing about the NBA is three months from now, there's going to be a guy who's available who none of us thought in a million years he was going to be available. But if we had to pick right now, like they're not doing the cat thing. Do they do something weird with Paul George? Like, I don't think so. I don't even know who it would be. John Morant recently signed with a new agent or fired his longtime agent. So maybe he's on the market. Maybe my favorite player is going to go pair up with fucking Wimbenyama or some shit for all I know. So, so Brooklyn, I'm sorry, not Brooklyn. Houston is operating with like two unprotected firsts. And then I think they have two protected firsts. I don't know what the protections are from Brooklyn, from the Harden trade. So if you're a Grizzlies fan, Rudy, which you are, are you taking mm-hmm. Jalen Green, Shen Goon, you know, X amount of those picks and then stuff to fill this to fill the salaries for John Morant. If John Morant asked out, I'd take that deal. That's a damn good deal. Damn good <laughs> but, deal. You make what about uh, you? You bitch, you make that deal? I'd take that deal. <laughs> I don't blame you. Damn good deal. <laughs> oh, what a good movie. Yeah. But that that implies that John Morant's value has tanked a little bit because he's asking out. When an NBA star asks out like that, his value goes in the fucking toilet. So to get two all-star caliber sub 22 year old i think nba prospects with you know very good numbers and uh, have been in a mixed of mix of losing and semi-winning situations you know coming to a stable front office environment of the uh the grizzlies where it's been a lot of uh steady development and winning i think could do them some good and really maximize the return and those two draft picks could turn into jake laravia or they could turn into brandon clark you know uh so i i take that deal uh brandon clark did recently return he's looking very good i'm very excited about that but this is not a grizzlies podcast as much as i would like it to be it's like he's been gone for like three years it really does um but although he may not be a top 10 player in 2030 i do think he'll be one of the best players in the nba in the future and that's kind of what the headlining topic of today's podcast is is talking about the future of the nba and I wanted to bring this up because I feel like this championship could be indicative of the tides changing, even the uh, the MVP, right? Because these sort of accolades are, are like a mirror to the the NBA zeitgeist at large, right? And if the what I'll say like the old guard wins a championship or MVP this season, uh, it'll kind of slow down just a little bit but right now it feels like it's a gradient of progress into the new era of the nba where these young guys are flourishing and taking over guys like women yama are officially in the league the game is uh a lot different than it was even three years ago so i think right now is a big moment of change in terms of the nba landscape uh so what are your guys overall thoughts on the future of the nba as this guy like shangun evolve into you know a b plus Jokic, or is uh the game going in a direction where it's like there's no more fucking point guards and it's just a bunch of wings and bigs uh because i feel like little guys don't really have a place in this league this is all sparked from that screenshot of the game between Jokic and Wimbenyama, where they both had insane numbers 
and the the matchup was good. Uh, Jokic is t- 29 now, but I don't think his game is really going to age very much with him. I th- believe he could play close to this level until he's like 39, you know? So what what's the NBA going to look like in 2030 to you guys? You know? So you think Jokic is, that's what you were saying is that Jokic could be a guy who plays at, at you know, this level, if not this level and a little marginally worse until he's 39. I mean, he's been an Iron Man most of his career, and he doesn't have an athletically based game that declines super easily. Sure, I, I got a fastball for you guys. I, maybe this is a crazy take. I don't. I, he's not going to be in the league in twenty thirty. He's going to yeah. retire twenty thirty. Twenty thirty in six years. The contract yeah, that he's currently on. I, I'm with Nick on. on this. That's six Dude, years. He's that's six years from now. He's what in his late twenties. Once once the contract that he's currently under is oh it's like five years 260 million dog he's getting his bag and he's out of here he doesn't even want to be here now you know what i mean so i'm I, i'm not i don't disputing. i don't agree that i don't agree with that i it's don't it's not think, about his ability it's not about his ability i know it, i don't think i think the notion that Jokic doesn't like basketball is far over no, no 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 it's not i'm not being very i'm not being literal that he doesn't want to fucking be here i'm just saying you're gonna get to a point where He's about to get another ring. At some point, he's going to win another MVP. And all the accolades and shit are just going to kind of come naturally. And it's like, what else is there to do? Once he finishes this contract, I just think, first of all, he's going to be, what, in his mid-30s. I just think he's going to be tired of it. Hmm. I'm uh, I'm going to piggyback off of what Nick said and just sprinkle this in here. Uh, he's 29. and six years, he'll be, he'll be 35. And I... I, well, I, I definitely think Jokic can play a long time. He doesn't seem like a I want to play till I'm 40 kind of right. guy. He also had, like he recently had a kid, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, you know, six years from now, I, I'm sure a lot of guys have the same kind of pathway where, yeah, on paper, you could play 10 more years if you wanted to. But when you start seeing your kid get to five, six, seven years old and they start getting into school and they start playing sports and you want to be there to watch them grow up, then it starts to become a lot more different of a discussion than it was, you know, five years before where you're like, oh, I'm going to play till I'm 40. It's like, yeah, you could play till 40 or you can watch your kid play basketball games every yeah. week. He'll One have nothing left to achieve at that more, point. Yeah. Like wh- why would you, why would you play till you're 40 if like you have nothing left to prove? I mean, I don't think it's that like he doesn't care about basketball or like doesn't have anything left to prove. I think it's more like it's really hard to say no to like two or three hundred million dollars. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. what's that next contract going to look like, especially after the NBA continues to grow like it has been tending to uh, like the, his potential next max contract could be one of the biggest in NBA history, especially for a guy who's that old signing it. Uh, and I think that's kind of too much money for almost anyone to walk away from. Even if you've already made hundreds of millions of dollars, it's nice to double up on your immense generational wealth. Right. That's not how I live my life. And I don't think that's how Jokic does. I think Jokic is capable of being satisfied with hundreds of millions of dollars. Probably. I agree with Alex. No idea. Yeah, I agree with that. First of all, I agree with that. Listen, I don't, I don't disagree that he would retire soon following that i don't think like rudy said that he'll play till 39 but i think he'll play till 35 so this is at the end of this contract that he's on by 2030 when he's 35 he's like done well so if we're saying that we're, if we're saying this is like the 29 30 season i think Jokic plays that season so now he would still be this- in our top 10 for that time frame not to do the semantics thing but would this not be 30 31 the season 20 rudy when oh, 30, well 30, no yep. rudy you got to steer the ship here because this is your podcast I mean, we so don't call this, but listen we call this the 2024 season right yeah and it's 23 24 oh sure oh, yeah that's yeah, fair yeah. yeah okay that's yeah. fair i think i think it's the year of the championship. 30 yeah okay. yeah um so Jokic's current contract has a player option in 28 right and he'll be 32 so do we think he's gonna opt into that or is he gonna Yes. Out of that I, I'm million. raising my hand because I, I, I have something very important to to kind of lay this out in a better way instead of sitting here dwelling on whether or not Jokic is going to be in the league in 2030. How about we look at the players who are 
still like under 25, 26 and get them out of the way. And then we can do the whole, like, is Jokic still going to be in the league and start Mm -hmm. going and looking at those guys? Because I think it's the young guys are the ones that you have to look at in this discussion of like, Mm -hmm. okay, they still have 10 years in front of them. They still have, you know, seven, eight years in front of them, as opposed to like with Jokic, it's like, well, he might play till he's 35. He might retire at 35. He might retire, you know, after this contract, we don't know. So let's, I, I think we should get rid of the young players first and establish mm-hmm. who is going to be there. I think, and then get into the older guys. I think Victor and Luca are the f- obvious one and two. I would mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. With Victor being the one. Anthony Edwards, probably. I was going to say yeah. it's Anthony Edwards and then Shea are probably the two after that. I think John Chet, Morant. I think Chet will be in there t- for other. <laughs> I think the tricky part here is that the truth oh, is. Oh, is John that- Morant sucks now. Get, I get it. I like him. So he sucks. Fucking that's totally reasonable. Fucking if you throw SGA and Ant in there. John Morant. Yes, two SGA players that are better. better than <laughs> uh, significantly better than John Morant. SGA is much yeah, better. Yeah, but not John. fucking leagues and, and leaps and bounds. You know, it's just better <laughs> i think what's uh, important to note here is that the truth of this list is that by 2030 how many of these guys are not currently in the league that are that's be something on this that list? will also have to be discussed you know what like i mean so we, i feel like it's important it's important to set up that we're gonna not i mean what are we gonna put on like modest Bu- buzelis we're gonna throw him on here like no no because right. i don't think he's gonna be that good i don't think he's gonna be that good either right yeah but, but like um, there are a couple of prospects like i don't i don't know much about the prospects going forward i know cooper flag is one of them that you could project to be a top 10 player by 2030 um i don't know alex if you know more because you know a little bit more about that than i do but far from uh, either let me throw a name out there uh-huh. Tyrese Halliburton. Mm. I like it. I was going to, you know, or what about Cade? I'm not doing the Homer thing. I'm genuinely asking. Is, is that Cade ceiling to you guys? Is that he could be top 10 in six years? Because I think it is. And that's, I'm, I that's but I watch movie. him every night. Yeah. All right. He's yeah, on the I list. Think, yeah. What about, what about Zion? Oh, Ooh. that's good. That's tough, man. And I'm not saying he should be on. I think this is one we should discuss. I mean, it's it's a little bit. It's theoretically, if he could just be healthy, then I'd be happy to. Put Which him he has here. been, but he and he has but been though. So we're he not, we're, he has been this year. <laughs> he could easily well, just fall right back to injury stuff again. It could also build up to the point where by the time he's been in the NBA for eight years, how how long would that be? When was he fucking drafted? Twenty eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, if he's been in the league for 12 years, Zion, that's tough. That's tough to imagine that wouldn't really build up to where he's just not good at this point, or at least not top 10. So, what about LaMelo? I was just thinking LaMelo. What about Paolo? That's another injury one. LaMelo is constantly hurt. Paolo. What about Paolo? I'll take Paolo over flag for sure, because I don't know nothing about flag. You should learn about him. Dude's good. Yeah, I'll see most him when he gets rep- to the league. He's got the most Republican sounding name I've ever heard in my life. Now, I feel like, you know, a, a couple of these guys in the league are going to have longevity. Is there a glaring omission of Jason Tatum here? Is, yeah. I mean, he'll be Tatum. in what, like Jason year 15, Tatum should definitely but be on here, yeah. he should be on the list. Yeah. What yeah, about no, Devin Booker, too? Because Devin Booker's still pretty young. But I, That'll be I like think year the, argument, for him. the argument to be made with Devin Booker is. A lot of people probably don't have him. Well, he's already 27, I guess. So yeah, yeah. six years from now, you'll be. Th- yeah, never mind. I, I think Booker probably is a, a fair scratch on this list. Gotcha. Who else no do we have in mind? There's, there's Chet an I have a question one. mark on him. We've got to be missing. So there's got to be one in here that's just going to be embarrassing that we forgot it. Like, I would love to throw Bilal Koulibaly on here, but I don't think he's going to be top 10. I think he could be top 20, but he's not going to be top 10. Let's let's reorder this because the fact that Tatum is under Paolo, Chet, Halliburton, and John Morant is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, <laughs> right. none of y'all better be a dick and screenshot this shit before we have the final one done. <laughs> because you said it, that is exactly what people are doing. God now. damn it. So, <laughs> don't you know how this works? Yeah, you'd think I'd learn by now. Um, I would probably put SGA and Tatum over Ant personally. Uh, I, I think by well, I feel 2030. Like 
I feel like the context of Tatum being a little bit lower is just because it'll it'll be later in his career. Right. You know what I mean? 30, though. 30 is fine. Is he, is he only 24? He's 25. Um, he's 25. So 30, 31. He's, I think he's 26. He recently turned 26. Uh, 32. I mean, 32 is still fine. We've been making Jason Tatum as 19 jokes for six years. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> That's wild. All right, so I'm going to say Ant over Tatum because he'll be an old man and Ant will be... Like, 30, um, 32 is that. not an old man. It's not, old. Oh, it's not old. I'll, I'll remember that when I'm 32. Especially with the way that like modern medicine is. I mean, we're already seeing dudes being able to play that's, at a that's pretty what high I, level. That's, that's what I was saying with Jokic because like, if he wants to, obviously he can play that time. But also, I feel like in general players being 38 and being really good is just going to happen more and yeah. more and more as time goes on. Yeah. Here's a, here's a good one. Nas Reed. Where are we at? Nas <laughs> Reed. Nas Reed. <laughs> now you're fucking cooking. That's, That's our official crazy. number 10. <laughs> Alyssa's You'll be done, 30. guys. Get your screenshots in. No, I'm, I'm no, joking. From what I have seen from Cooper Flag, from what I have heard about him as a prospect from people who I trust, prospect wise cooper flag is going to be good as fuck in the nba i think we should keep him in here just because it's it would be nice to have somebody who's not in the league yet yeah, and it's not just, just interesting sure let's let's like, keep it's it like let's... it's like the one college guy on team usa <laughs> so Cade cunningham on the list or no a lot of people are judging us for putting hallie in the chat for some reason i think that's crazy um if we had to I would Kate put Hallie anywhere. at the bottom of this group, probably. Uh, below flag? Yeah. No, I don't know nice enough thing. about flag to have a strong opinion either way. We we should have we should have got like a resident draft guy to pop in for a second to talk about this shit. Where did he commit? Cooper Flag. Duke. Oh Do you remember all the memes about guy. it? Fuck him. Fuck him. Into the ground. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> a white dude who's a star player for Duke? No fucking way. <laughs> no one's ever seen this before. Uh, we got chat saying Cade before Halley. I'm not against it, but I, I think Halley has proven this season that he's pretty damn good, albeit his context allows him to really shine more than most players. Like I feel like as far as like being dependent on the team context, Halley is towards the top of that list all i know I mean, is I, that whatever order we put this in there's going to be something egregious about it so i don't think we should get too hung up either way strongly agree uh well if you guys are cool with it i'm cool with this list personally i think this this is a nice list yeah i think it's fine i i would love to put kate in here i'm just trying to figure like i would love to kick paulo out i would have no issue i wouldn't even flinch and i'd do that but but if the if the panel here believes that Paulo deserves to be in there, then then let's keep him in there. I'll be honest. There's one player on this list that is uh, sticking out like a sore thumb, not just in placement, but uh, being here in general. You can say it. It's John Morant. We're all thinking it. Yeah. I just don't understand why. He's you know? certainly not this high. All right. I'll put him below Hallie since Hallie is a, a lights out shooter and that matters to you guys so much. I mean, he should be below Do you know Terry's, what, you know what but... year it is, Rudy? You know what day and age we're in. I know, Ball. Make no mistake. I'm, I'm, I'm the pro casual for a reason. It's because I have the best basketball analysis on the fucking planet. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just not even that crazy about Chet being on here, and I think I'm, he's I'm really good. With you. Yeah. yeah, Jacob, you just said it that in passing, and I just, you know, I've only. Well, I mean, months. I think I think Chet could be like ten. I don't think I. I think ten. Uh, Kate, I was gonna say no. Fuck it, just put Kate instead of him. Dude, I think Chet's nah. skill set is kind of gonna lend to the idea that overall impact will probably be on chet's side yeah than... yeah overall impact wise like he's gonna be a top three defender in the nba while being a very positive offensive player like a 20 and 10 guy and a top three defender i'll take that over what i think Cade's going to be y'all are just lucky i don't have triple j and desmond bain on here with gg jackson 
I, I'm not going to get too hung up on Chet. Uh, I think there's other stuff to discuss here anyway. So I would put Chet over Cade personally. All right, we got one. Uh, Nick, I'm assuming you're also voting Cade over Chet. Yeah. No, right, it's it's two to one. Um, anyone else eliminated from the list or needs to be moved badly? I think Wimby Luca is pretty locked in. SGA and Ant, I could flip those personally. Um, Tatum, I could see him going as high as three. I. I'm not yeah, as concerned know. about the order as I am just getting 10 good names here. But That's where I'm at. Yeah. Like, I'm not mm. – right, right now, I'm cool with this order for the most part. I'm just wondering if there's names that we should be adding. Is there like a – and I'm just I'm just throwing this out. I'm just asking. Just this asking not questions. Just asking, it's not just asking questions, but I oh. am just throwing it out there. Thank you, Al. Okay, all right, sure. It's just asking questions. We're not putting, like – there's no Darius Garland. There's no Donovan Mitchell. There's no Jalen Brunson. Like we're not doing that. Donovan Mitchell, I believe, is the same age as Devin Booker. Okay, so then. No. And I, I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, if Donovan Mitchell's not a top, I mean, he maybe is a top ten player, depending on who you ask. I understand that, but six years from now, sure. okay. if he's barely Question. a top ten player now, is he going to be a top ten player? Question: Do we think that Giannis can be a top ten player at 35? Mm, I don't think so. And I mean, Giannis is fantastic, but. We're talking about games that are going to age well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Giannis immediately comes to mind in that discussion. That's all I'll say. Yeah. There would need to be like a development in his game. Another wrinkle that extends his career, you know, kind of like a LeBron developing a a more finesse game. Start working. I've (laughs) got to take about Cooper. Jalen Williams. Oh, so Cooper flags. uh, I think he's going to be very good, but. There is so much unknown with like pre NBA to NBA translation and like scouting. Like we hear it all the time that like the draft is a crapshoot. I'm not sure I'm comfortable having Cooper flag over any of these guys just simply because we don't know. And like, there's so much more known with everyone else, even if they may not end up being as good. It's like, well, we don't know yet. So how can we, yeah, as long as he's in there, I'm good. I don't really care where. But like, I do feel like we should include him. As far as I, that's the only like prospect that I have heard in the past couple of years. That's like, oh, he's gonna be him. Other than Wendy, it's been it a while. Been, it would have been just as easy if we were doing this list five years ago. We would have put Amani Bates on here. I mean, the yeah, way that people facts, were talking yeah, about, you know what wrong. I mean? And and how did that turn out? So, I think there's the this is the give and take of like the truth is that in five in six years when this list is like real. You know, some of these guys that are on the list aren't even going to be in the league. And so we're just kind of trying to be proactive about it and throwing somebody on there. Um, I think the truth is that Cooper Flag being on this list at all has the highest level of potential to age horribly. But but at the same time, it has very high potential to age well because we're calling a guy being top 10 before he's even in the fucking league. I wouldn't call it high. I wouldn't call it high because we're talking about a dude being top 10 who's in high school right now. I think he's, it's, isn't it like, I don't know. So I I, one, one, thing, one thing I will say is a frequent comparison that uh, Cooper flag gets is like an Andre Karolinko, like plus, which I, you know, that has the potential to be a very, very, very good player, but top 10 player in the NBA, especially since we haven't seen him even play college yet. I don't know if I'm ready to throw him in this list. That's all I'm saying. What if we put Trey Young over Cooper Flag? I'd I'd leave the podcast. I would put heard. Chet in before. Like I don't understand why. I don't. I, I think Chet can be a top ten player. I would if we are replacing Cooper Flag with anybody. I am okay with it being Chet. Trey Young will be thirty one, so I don't know if Trey Young would be the guy that I would go to. Is he top ten today? I no, no, and I honestly, exactly. so what I, are we talking about? I, yeah, that's how I, I don't, that's kind of how I feel about Halliburton on here. Is I feel like Halley's not going to get a lot better than he currently is, and he's probably he's probably top ten, but like, you know, he's much closer to ten than one for sure. Um, I, well, I mean, know. Tyrese Halliburton will be thirty, so yeah, thirty's fine. Prime yeah, age, yeah, right there in that Jason Tatum territory. Do we uh, have any belief in Scoot Henderson? 
That's a good question. Mm. That's a really good one. I'm not gonna say he's gonna be top ten. Not a that's I mean, a, that's a leap. That's a right, pretty I mean, big there, leap but more. there have been plenty of guys like Darius Garland had just as dog shit of a rookie season. You know, there's examples of guys who just as rookie point guards just suck out of the gate. And then they figure it out. So that's plausible. Mm-hmm. And he had a lot of up. Scotty Barnes is interesting. Yeah, from the chat. Shout out Rowlett. Thank you. Uh, I feel like Scotty would be like eleven for me here. <laughs> like he's like just outside. Yeah, Jacob, you brought up J Dub when Alex started talking. Yeah, where is he better pick than Chet to you? I, the more I watch J Dub, the more I'm like, the sky is the fucking limit for that guy. Like he. He doesn't have he's not a high volume three point shooter, but his percentages are great. He is a pretty high volume mid range shooter at this point with great percentages. He's a strong finisher. He has good handle. He's good at creating space for himself. He has a really big, good NBA body. He's kind of got the whole fucking package in terms of like where you're going to develop your game from there. Uh, I, I, I think this, like I said, sky's kind of the limit for J Dub. Will he actually eclipse top 10? That's more, I don't know. I'm curious what Alex thinks of that. I mean, yeah, people are weird with J-Dub lately just because, like, everyone thinks, you either think he's, like, insanely overrated or you, like, are just, like, way too high on him. Um, I mean, I think it's entirely reasonable to think that he could potentially be a top 10 player in 2030, which I understand is, like, a hot take, but I, I don't know how you can watch him and be like, yeah, this guy, you know, top 30 or top, you know, 30 to 40 player at best. I'm like, no, this dude, everything that he does screams, you know, top 20 player in the future, maybe higher being, I'm not saying right now, but like, yeah, five years from now, I think that's reasonable. Being this efficient of a 20 point per game score at in year two, He's fucking nuts, man. Well, everyone talks about his volume, and I'm like, well, the problem with that is right now, even if you're just going off of his raw volume, like if you look at the minutes that he plays without Shea, he's still scoring at an extremely uh, efficient rate, even though he's getting more defensive attention and creating most of his own offense by himself. Um and so, like, the questions that everyone has about him scaling up and taking on more offensive responsibility, I'm like, I don't know why he wouldn't be able to do that because we've seen him do it this I year. Do, like, they literally give the keys to him in the start of fourth quarters. I do think the – really what will be – what decides his ceiling would be the playmaking. I haven't seen, like – I haven't seen really one way or the other, like, strong signs of being a negative or, like, a remarkably positive playmaker – He's, he's definitely he a plus playmaker. Yeah. Definitely like, a plus playmaker. Yeah, definitely not a but like there's a difference between that and being like truly an exceptional passer. And if he could be that, then that because you know Well, what do you mean by exceptional? Exceptional, like being a top fifteen passer in the entire NBA. I like, mean, who are the something... 15 best passers in the oh, NBA? God damn. Oh, let's fucking just, rank them. 15 right passers. <laughs> let's rank them. That's great content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real fast. Uh, we got Chris Paul. No, no. Tyus no, Jones. No, no, LeBron no, no, James. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. But you anyway, get my I, point. Like, yeah, being, I'm, being, I think we're on the same page. Being a really strong playmaker makes scoring easier. And with also just having that, you just become a ridiculously unstoppable offensive engine. Uh mm. Yeah, he definitely makes good reads, but there's a difference between making good reads and like constantly creating opportunities for your teammates. Uh, uh, he, he, I would say he, he definitely creates like high level reads and like mm-hmm. is able to capitalize on some pretty tight passing windows. Like I, I don't know. I think I think you're underselling his passing a little bit. Is all I'll say. Okay, fair enough. I feel like the top five of this are locked in, and then the bottom five are a total toss up. Um, I've seen people throw around Brandon Miller and Tyrese Maxey as potential guys to replace some of these other guys. I've heard people bring up Zion again. Uh, Are we sure this is our 10 or do we want to incorporate some of these other guys? I think this, I I think either way, we could sit here for two more hours and we could put in different names Uh, for two more hours and we would never be satisfied. I do. I do want to throw in another rookie into the conversation. What about Brandon Miller? 
Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why he just, just brought up. That was thing. just on screen, Jacob. Oh, <laughs> well then, I was ironically looking at the chat that I think you put on screen, <laughs> so I didn't see that you put it on screen. You damn fool. Yeah. yeah, I mean Brandon Miller, I think potentially, but not someone I'm going to be sold on being a top ten guy. Yeah, not as confident as Cheddar Cade, I reckon. But yeah, all right, that's our top ten players in 2030 our, our lock it in prediction super serious list be sure to keep the receipts and call us back in six years uh, hey man maybe <laughs> we will maybe the shoot around is a global massive success and in six years we can check in to see how right or wrong we were that's my or plan. or we'll all be dead who knows anything <laughs> can happen yeah so we actually have a game now coming up that we haven't done before I have collected six quotes from NBA players over the past week since our last show. And you are going to tell me if it's a real quote or a fake quote. Uh, the object of the game is obviously to guess more correctly than your opposing podcast co-host. Uh, seems pretty self-explanatory to me. I am going to put uh, five seconds on the clock uh, on this uh Here's scoreboard, right? And not five seconds, five minutes, excuse me. <laughs> um, but without any further ado, is, I mean, do you all need any further explanation or are you all going to uh, figure this out as we go along? Go for it. All right. Let me see if I can find that damn window. There we go. Clock is ticking. And now on to our first quote. Uh, open damn Photoshop. D'Angelo Russell, the language Kobe Bryant spoke to me or spoke was foreign to me at the time. Uh, you do have lifelines. You could ask me to quote the article that this is in or uh, ask me to give you the outlet that it is from. I don't even need it. D'Lo was very famously pretty green when he came into the league, not like in the way that, you know, I just feel like from an etiquette perspective you think about the phone incident with nick young i just think there was a lot going on in his life that he didn't really i just think this is real just through virtue of how the first few leagues the first few years in the league went for him i just think this is also just like way too like beautiful of a quote to be fake it's a very very good quote <laughs> right it's like was he was he speaking italian like he does or is he, he being... <laughs> literally was speaking italian <laughs> he was trying to coach me through a different language and that just didn't work for me i kept trying to tell him i don't speak italian <laughs> <laughs> that's the rest of the quote i just uh, left it off also i'm pretty sure i know the podcast that this is from I'm, i think i saw a youtube short of this oh, okay okay i could be wrong but he was on a podcast recently talking about some stuff so d'angelo russell is a, a fun player to have kind of recognize in NBA history. I feel like he's been low key more influential, <laughs> not in terms of like the game, but in terms of like, you know, what people talk about in the NBA, then maybe people give him credit for that. Nick young incident really blew him up to a uh, stardom, if you will. <laughs> uh, but from there, I mean, when he was in Brooklyn, people were talking about how he's going to be the future of that franchise, you know, at, at some points during the season, not consistently, but Dilo's a, a fun guy. I think he's uh, not not the as bad as I used to hate on him for. I used to hate on all those young Lakers from that that Kobe generation, where it was uh, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Lonzo Ball. Like, it was just so fun to hate on the young Lakers. And here they are, old again. So <laughs> have none of them. Young oh, boy, Alex. <laughs> oh, that wasn't just me. That's how it came through for oh, y'all, too. Rough. All right. Well, fortunately, we still do have uh, two and a half minutes left on the clock. Uh, do you guys want to go ahead and lock in your guesses, or we do you want to discuss this was... quote? Yeah, it's real. It's real. It's real. I'll uh, I'll wait on Alex to come back to verify the realness of it all. So we got oh, a question in the chat. In the chat. Asked... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say maybe maybe just in the meantime we can explain uh, God, if there are people, people out there. Are so I guess... young. If we're too far removed from this and people don't remember, the TLDR is that Nick Young was just like chopping it up with D'Lo about cheating on Iggy Azalea and D'Angelo Russell just fucking recorded the phone call. And then like, what happened? Did, he didn't tweet the video. How did the video get out? No, I don't think it was he a phone was call. It was literal Instagram. locker room talk. No, it was locker room talk. And he like sent it to like some girl on Snapchat or whatever. And she just like saved it and leaked it. 
<laughs> well, the video is of Nick Young like sitting on his couch, like it's in somebody's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. he's just like, or he posted I he meant, like on Snapchat. the phone, like he recorded. No, 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 no. I mean, like he, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He physically yeah. recorded it. So that's what happened with D'Lo and Nick Young. <laughs> it is StreamYard really uh, shitting the bed for us here <laughs> with uh, both Nick and Alex right now while the clock is ticking of all times? You know, you guys have a minute left. Uh, do you want to? Are you guys excited? You guys are coming to Chicago this weekend. Want to rap about Why that for a minute? Just like that. You <laughs> have advertised it. Yes, yes, yes. What what about it? What what do we do? What are we saying? What do you what do you plan on doing? Let the people know. Uh drugs, uh seeing a movie, playing basketball. Fucking drugs. What a ridiculous <laughs> answer. <laughs> Alex, are you locked in for a uh, true on this one? Uh the D Lo one? Yes. Yes. All right, so all three are locking in true. Uh, that is a point for all of you. It is true. Ding, ding, ding. And let me, uh, you know, I might just say fuck it to this clock because I don't really want to reset it. Maybe if I, nope. All right. I don't think it'll take us five minutes anytime. <laughs> gotcha. I'll just update the scoreboard and then uh, show you guys at the end. That's one question. Let that run out and then uh, go back to Photoshop. I really love using a, Photoshop is like the the main way. See, I have it like blue if it's true. You know, I got a I got a whole system here for you guys. Mm. So next is Kelly Oubre on the his in, interaction with the referees versus the Clippers. I try to represent God in the best way, uh, and that wasn't it. This is referring to him pointing to all of them and saying, "You're a bitch. You're a bitch. You're a bitch." Uh, Your I mom's a bitch. Family a bitch. Yeah. Your grandma's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he did. He said he did. this. I remember him he, saying this. I was gonna say he had a quote like this. I didn't think this was it verbatim. I thought the quote was a little bit funnier. So just for the sake of zagging, uh, I feel like whenever I've been on the show and we do games, I just can't stop winning. So maybe I should commit to. I should tank. Uh, I'm gonna zag <laughs> and say he did not say this, but he said something adjacent to this. Alex, what's your guess? If you just change like two words. I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Or like the space in between God and air. Yeah, that's a pure, that's a pure typo, and I can't correct it because of how I did this. So, um, <laughs> who is God in? Yeah, bingo. I, I feel like it's true. I, I'm pretty sure I heard something similar to this. It is true. Uh, you are both correct. Nick missing out on that point. And uh, that brings the score to two versus two versus one. Uh, this is a uh, not a quote, but a uh, record set by a player. A little bit different, but whatever. Uh, Demontis Sabonis is the second NBA player with 1,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 600 assists in an NBA season. Is this one true or false, fellas? False. Jacob, I got Straight a false up. locked in for you. I think at least Wilt and Jokic have done this. I'm going to be honest. Uh, this is true as fuck. Isn't the other player like a surprise, like pretty surprising though? I, I saw a stat similar to this and I can't remember exactly what it was. There, but... I feel like there's no way Jokic didn't do that. Like, he could be the how Woody. What do you mean? How Woody? Who's to say <laughs> that Jokic isn't the first, you know? Right. But I think Wilt Indeed. did it as well. He has a season where he averaged like eight assists a game. I got it. The I uh, the NBA has to has to has to has to erase that guy from fucking history. They just have to. <laughs> they have to. I'm serious. I'm tired of like dudes playing in 2024 when like shit's actually real and they're not like milk delivery guys fucking running around in the league. And like, oh, this player just put up 117, 65, and 19. Sorry, Wilt did it first. I'm sure he did. Nobody was fucking around to see it. Nobody <laughs> is even alive anymore to have seen Wilt play. Like, what the fuck? That's not entirely true, but I get what you're oh, saying. Oh, it's not entirely true. My name's Jacob. Why are you making me British? Do you know how insulting that is? Because it's always Jacob something. Jacob hates British people for some reason. Uh, I'll give you a hint. I know what they did. Wilt Chamberlain did indeed do this. 
So did you. Yeah, yes, it's true. Jacob, you're going false. Nick, false. you're true. And yeah, Alex... just because I'm the only pro Sabonis guy on the show, apparently. So <laughs> that's your role. That's why we keep you around. Jacob is wrong. Nick and Alex are right. That brings what? Alex into how, the lead. How, at, uh, three... how did Jokic oh. not get 1,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 600 assists? Explain that to me. He just hasn't done it. He just hasn't done it. Uh, so, yeah, that one is a resounding true. Next, we got Michael Porter Jr. You've got to be fucking brother. kidding me. He has a he has a season with over a thousand points, over a thousand rebounds, and five hundred and eighty four assists. That's why they draw the lines the way they do. God Michael damn it. Porter Jr. defends his brother Jante amid this betting investigation. I wouldn't bet on it. No what he shot. False. No, no hilarious. Not. The quote was like, I know he wouldn't do anything to jeopardize his spot. And it was like something actually real. I mean, it was stupid as fuck. And he was just covering for his brother. But I wasn't it wasn't this on the nose. False. <laughs> false. You're all locking in false. Yeah, you are correct. It is indeed false. So that raises all of your point totals up by one. Alex still with a one point lead closing on the last two rounds. So. Y'all are uh, in for a doozy here. Uh, DeJounte Murray, quote unquote, I got another 10K for a Hawks fan who hit a half court shot for $10,000. Is this that a did real happen. quote or a fake quote? That's real. That did happen. Real. Yeah, I got I to gotta tell you, I don't know if you guys saw the Jazz fan who hit that shot and was supposed to win a car. And then the Jazz were like, oh, uh, no, uh, you, it, you shot it too late and the buzzer went off. And they, the fans started booing. Like, I don't even know who they were booing. They started like booing the guy who was emceeing the event on the court. And then oh, apparently the jazz felt bad about it and did in fact end up giving him the car, but they tried to horse shit him out of it. That being said, this did happen. DeJounte Murray did say this. Everybody locked in to true. Stupidly locked in. Jacob. Yep. Yes. You are all correct. It is true. Uh, DeJounte Murray. Uh, you know, they, the guy who allegedly did it quote tweeted this tweet and, uh, I see no reason that they weren't in contact afterwards. So theoretically, DeJounte Murray did follow up on this. What do y'all think about him putting up a uh, 44 points on 44 shots with no Trey Young? <laughs> shooter it's shoot. Funny. Yeah, it's funny. I saw I saw an article uh, leading the headline with like Twitter reacts to DeJounte Murray doing that quote unquote Kobe would be proud. And I'm just like, I don't think that was the the sentiment across all of Twitter, but sure, you know, whatever. And it was literally like the the inverse of that was Book having another one of his 50-point specials on like 27 shots. Yeah. It's been a pretty wild end of the season overall, honestly. Mike Conley on the drama around the Wolves sale. As far as the players are concerned, I think that we're just like, damn, that's crazy. He said this, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh is that a is that a final answer from you alex you are um, in the lead here so uh it's a one point game still worst case scenario is a tie for you i mean yeah i'm gonna lock in i'm pretty sure he said this so then to hedge alex i would have to say not true then Right, for the game theory of all this to sure. work out you guys okay. have to bet on false however yeah. if you just want to run up your own personal high score you know, juice your juice yeah, your stats going, a little bit. I'm going with true. Well, so far this is the only one that I actually I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm gonna yeah. say no. He didn't say this. All right. So I got a true from Jacob, right? Mm, actually, I'm gonna change it to a false. Okay. So you two are on false, and Alex is on true. Alex, congratulations! You are the Fuck. winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, congratulations <laughs> a two-point so margin of victory <laughs> for the legendary alex hoops uh that is why you're the legend alex and these other guys are just the latest and greatest and uh the one, the and, one only. and only <laughs> that's it yeah <laughs> so six to four victory for alex hoops uh shout out to uh mike conley alex is in speaking like a real person information <laughs> Alex knows ball. What can we say? Uh, we did get a few questions, so we're going to close this one out with a Q&A. 
Uh, shout out to everyone in the chat. We got about 200 concurrent right now. This is our last call for chats and super chats for questions before we close out the podcast. We are at the one hour mark, more or less, at this point. I want to start out with the guys who paid us first in order of uh, amount of money donated. Uh, Neil Oldham. <laughs> At says Jacob made a main channel video about trying to rebalance offense and defense. The new era of talent like Wemby can make that happen without any big rule changes. He's like Curry in the way he establishes a new archetype. Uh, fellas, do we agree or disagree with this? Thank you very much for the twenty dollars, Neil. I don't know if I'm going to say it's that simple, but I definitely do feel like the fact that Wemby is probably going to be the best player in the NBA. And he's such a prominent, like uh, more of a positive defender than he is an offensive player. I think the league's forward facing star being such a defensive juggernaut might culturally bring defense a little bit more into the zeitgeist. The word of the pod is zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. Other guys, what do you, what do you think about this? other guys that's you <laughs> you're uh mark Wahlberg and will ferrell <laughs> nice uh i mean i feel like defense was gonna come back one way or another like every like the, the league is getting lengthier um players are getting more skilled at, at in bigger frames um i think defense kind of coming back was inevitable and plus all the league changes that or the changes that the league was trying to implement recently where they're like yeah we're not going to call as many uh you know shooting fouls where the offensive players initiating contact i think stuff like that was kind of heading in that direction anyways maybe Wemby expedited the process sort of like how the league was starting to shoot threes already before steph but steph like expedited the process i think it's probably similar with Wemby, where like yeah you know, we were kind of heading this way anyways, where like defense was going to start to balance out a little bit um, as as players just got lengthier. Uh, but I'm sure Wemby will probably make teams rethink their roster construction and be like, OK, maybe we should value defense a little bit more than we have in the past. I think a, a big part of this is that he's implying that this is sort of like a player talent balance, like and tendencies type thing like uh, adjust the 2k sliders a little bit if you will but i feel like that's already happened this season where jacob and i's video about like the the overpoweredness of offense lately in the nba came right before a immediate strong downturn this season in offensive output and the refs started swallowing the whistle a lot no, more not, not immediately and, after like a couple of days after two different players had 70 <laughs> yeah and then yeah. it happened. But after yeah, that. not to suggest that we're in any way ca causal <laughs> with this. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, but, yeah, it really just comes down to how the refs official officiate the game. And I think we've seen evidence that you don't need new rules to make it work. It's just a matter of making playoff basketball sort of the norm. Uh, but thank you, Neil. Do appreciate the donation. Mr. Jones gave us five bucks to say Jaden Ivy should be traded and possibly Duran too, if he can't play defense. This one is for you, Mr. Motown. What do you think? I've been banging the drum about, like, Ivy's not going to be here for more than, like, three more years for basically since the day he got drafted. Like, it's just not going to it's just not gonna happen. Um, the Duran defense thing is pretty fair, but what's also fair is, like, two or three weeks ago when he was like, yeah, my defense has sucked a lot the last couple months, but he's like, it's just because I've been hurt. And it's like, well, okay, because it's like he has the verticality, he has the length, he has the size, the frame, the synonyms. Um, you know, when you think about the Pistons moving forward and, and how active they are giving the illusion that they want to be uh, in the trade market this summer, because Lord knows they're not going to be able to sign anybody. Um, you know, you think about that. Despite that they're like $80 million in cap, right? <laughs> 61 something like that mm -hmm. yeah it's like oh cool you're gonna like pay miles bridges and like tobias harris like that's cool um you know when you just think about that proverbial mm -hmm. chopping block i think it's i've talked about this i think ad nauseum at this point but it's like isaiah stewart's number one just through virtue of his contract it's a very tradable contract um despite i believe that the pistons want to keep him around and i think that they should but then after that it's like yeah Jaden ivy's number two you know, it, it sucks, man, for for a team that's as bad as it is. Um, there are a lot of guys who I, I care about 
and I care about what their future is. And most of them, I want it to be on this team. And Duran is definitely one of those guys who I'm like, it would feel really bad if it happens somewhere else for him. And that's not to say he's a fucking zero. I say that like he's a make a wish kid. He's, he's pretty good. Um, but it would feel pretty bad if another team is able to figure him out and it's and, not with Detroit. Am I crazy? Or is Duran one of those guys where it's like, he has all the tools. He's just extremely young and putting them together and he's doing them at a good rate, but he's in a losing situation. So he's not utilizing all those tools specifically on defense. I I seen on Twitter, basically, I'm not going to act like I'm out here watching Pistons games like you are or anything like that. But it seems like the first quarter of the season, it's like, wow, Jalen Duran's fucking good. And then we all kind of fell away from that a little bit because he started just like phoning it in on defense. Do you think it's a matter of him being in that losing situation, causing him to develop at a slower pace? Or do you think that uh, him figuring it out somewhere else uh, is won't be a matter of being in a winning situation, but rather being in like a better developmental situation? unfortunately it's a little too nuanced of a question for my chimp brain i don't i mean hey i don't know um i watch him get blown by by like even marvin bagley on some night I'm like oh okay i didn't know that That's was on the menu tonight it does it doesn't feel fucking great uh, i mean i'm happy for marvin and it's it's probably my least favorite thing that we've done in the last few years is trading him away but um yeah you know there's always the part of it that is like well it's a losing team and it's you know it's just harder for guys but it's like Cade doesn't give a fuck about that. You watch Cade in all of these games, and it's it's pretty obvious that he is that dude. Um, you don't really question a lot of the shit that he does. I mean, there are things that are annoying, um, but it's shit that he can tighten up, like stop making dumb passes <laughs> and stop trusting your teammates so much. You know what I mean? Sometimes you need to be a little bit more selfish and just kind of uh, not just put the ball in your own hands, but keep the damn ball in your own hands because on a lot of these nights... Uh, he's really the only one who can do anything. And you look at Ivy's three point percentage, like since the all-star break and you just kind of roll your eyes, you know, he still kind of does that thing where he charges downhill and he like, doesn't really know if he's about to attempt a layup or if he's going to pass out of it. And then before it's too late, he's like wily coyote into the ground. So I, I don't know, man, it's, it's fucking annoying. I'm miserable watching this team, but again, like there are so many guys that I, don't want to trade, but I know we're going to have to. Our next chat. Uh, thank you again. <laughs> thank you again, uh, Mr. Jones for the fiver. Uh, we got splur spurge one, two, three, uh, just reinforcing some canon of this podcast. Alex literally has the same facial hair as rusty. Not even a question. Didn't give us money. Just wanted to start and bring it up. I think that was in response to a debate that was happening. His hair is slightly chat. lighter than mine. But more another about. another frequent shouter, legend of the shoot around. Honestly, been here for well over a year. Honestly, Dre hit him up, uh, referring to us saying that <laughs> Gen Z is cooked from the the COVID pandemic. Uh, he says, "No, if you don't have friends, that is a skill issue." <laughs> Spoken yeah. like a true fucking nineteen year old. Wait until yeah. you get into your mid twenties and try to make a friend, dude. Yeah, yeah dude, making making new friends after the age of like 20 is impossible yeah good luck <laughs> i won't say impossible but it is way more challenging for sure uh chicken nuggets triple seven says love the pod here's a question how good of a defender do y'all think tatum is I, I, think he's, I, think he's, I think he's like just good enough to like be a great defender that's not gonna be an all defense caliber guy Yeah, I mean, I think that he's been on defense before, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he could get it a couple of times, but he's not going to be like a 10 time. Yeah, his all his offensive player. burden's just too significant. Plus, right. they used to run him at power forward like way more, mm -hmm. and now they use him more as like a point forward and defensively his role's a little different. Boring stuff. Not the stuff people come to this pod for. Very strong <laughs> sure defender, though, for sure. And I think it's a routinely something that is undermentioned with him. When we're talking about him, stronger than JB, Jalen Brown. Yes, yeah. he is a yeah. better defender than Jalen Brown. I can I feel that confidently. Uh, Jovanovic says, "Are you taking Jokic over Hakeem all time if Jokic wins the title this season?" Uh, let's That's throw the MVP in there. Let's throw the MVP in there too. Let's say yeah. maximum accomplishments based on this season. He gets the MVP, gets the title. 
a uh, hell of a run. Hakeem is one of those guys where he has like an outside case of the, the goat discussion. Uh, you know, people who are much older than us tend to make that sort of debate happen, but he's a, a lock of a top 10 all time player for sure. You can't leave him off. Uh, does Jokic enter that realm? Should he max out his accomplishments this season? If he's not, he's certainly knocking on the door. Yeah, for context, I have Hakeem number five all time. Um, I get a lot of pushback for that, but like Jokic is probably if yeah, if he wins MVP in another championship. I mean, the we're talking about accolades, but like performance wise, Jokic is one of the greatest offensive players ever, the greatest offensive center ever. I think pretty clearly at this point i don't think that's even like a hot take anymore i, I think he's uh, the second greatest offensive player period yeah i mean my point is that if he doesn't have an argument now then after this season next season you know you add another championship to the question or to the equation yeah probably he's he's knocking at that door i don't see why not his body of work is it speaks for itself absolutely nick your thoughts I don't fucking know anything about Hakeem Olajuwon's <laughs> career. I don't know. Thank you for, for being so honest with us. It means a lot to me. What am <laughs> I going to sit here and, and lie for five? I don't fucking know. Uh, maybe. It's so easy know. to do. It's so easy to do. <laughs> I got nothing to prove. Uh, Jacob Crawford says, are you guys going to update the logo to include Nick in it? Absolutely. I didn't even, in I didn't fact, even if think it's, about that. If it's not updated by next show, I'm going to put it in the apologies uh, leading segments, you know, and I'll also apologize for being 10 minutes late today. Fuck it up our average. 10 minutes late is not crazy for us. That's pretty good <laughs> based on our track record. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that is it. Shout out to everyone who joined us in the live chat. I, I, it sucks because we're peaking in our concurrent viewers right now. If you're in the stream, go ahead and leave a like so people can see it after we get done going live. And uh, with that... Oh, shit almost broke. All right. <clears throat> Splash.